Nice. And there's the problem. As soon as we're done sanding or cutting or anything else, the first thing we do, if we're even wearing one of these, is we take it off. So the big problem with that, all that dust that you maybe hopefully sucked down into here, guess what? There's still a bunch of it floating around in the air. So let's find a better way of taking care of that dust than just a mask that only protects us part of the time. You can have a really great dust collection system in your shop with tubing run all over the place and great dust collectors and separators and everything else. But unless you're actually capturing the particulate out of the air, you're only doing half the job. Uh, I have a shop vac hooked up to this with a dust deputy and it does a great job. It has holes in the bottom and it sucks dust up from here. The problem is that it doesn't get all the dust. There's dust that kicks out around that sanding pad. When I'm running my table saw, I capture the dust that goes under the table. I'm not capturing the stuff that goes under I don't have an overarm. I'm not capturing the stuff that goes over top. When I'm running my, uh, my cross cut, my uh, compound miter saw, holy mackerel. Uh, I try to collect dust out of that thing, but there's a lot of it that ends up in the air. And I can attest to that from just the amount of dust I collect around my shop. So what do you do? You wear a mask when you're cutting, but if you take that mask off when you're done, you're still breathing in all of the dust particles that have yet to settle. And that can be a huge issue. There are solutions to those problems, and they are dust filtration systems. Uh, most of the ones you'll find hang from the ceiling, have uh, filters, maybe a couple of stages of filters, a fan that sucks the air through those filters and then ejects cleaner air out the other side. Those are great solutions, but they're not always the best for budget-minded people. Um, I, I mean, obviously you can't put a price on health, but you don't always have $700 to shell out for a, uh, you know, a really nice dust filtration system. The good thing is you don't have to. Uh, back Last year, I think it was, Wood Magazine ran a comparison article on multiple uh, dust filtration systems. And I am a subscriber to Wood Magazine, so I was looking at that because having a small shop in a probably a subpar dust collection system, uh, I was like, you know what, maybe I need to up my game and get one of these systems and really, you know, keep the dust down in my shop, and more importantly, keep it out of my lungs. So I said, cool, let's give this a read. There was, it was a really interesting article. Um, I will link to it. It's actually available online now, and I will link to it down in the description below. But really what came out of that article to me was that there is a budget option that will just blow your mind at how effective it is as compared to the cost, and not just the cost of the system, but the cost compared to the very next available item and how it performs. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a box fan. It's a $20 box fan. Get it at Walmart, get it at Target, Home Depot, wherever. You can find them, Amazon, $20. Really, you shouldn't need to spend a whole lot more than that. Um, there's not a lot to it. There's three speed control up top, sucks air in one side, pushes it out the other. It's a box fan. Uh, these are hugely popular. They fly off the shelves in the, in the summertime because, you know, people know how good they are at moving air and keeping cool. I don't use it to keep cool. I, I did, I had this, I owned it, but I actually now use it as my dust filtration system. And let me show you how this works. And by the way, I'm going to get to the article too, because it's important in that it opened my eyes to just how good this solution is. And I got the idea from them. I didn't dream this up on my own. I got this from them. Uh, and I'm sure they didn't come up with it. Someone else out there has been using this system probably for a while. I built a little housing, scrap plywood. This is like half inch and some three quarter inch ply. I built some sides, 
you can see the sides right here. And then I just built some, some thin pieces across the top here, screwed them in front and back, and put a filter in there. And all of a sudden, I've got this really decent dust filtration system. And between the fan and the filter, it's about 40 bucks. Now, let me explain to you why that's such a cool thing in terms of what you could get if you spent your money elsewhere on a professionally engineered system. Because I was like, well, you know, they've got to be better, right? The cheapest one ab above this one, this is actually listed as their editor's pick for a budget air filtration system. And you'll kind of get why in just a minute. The next highest or the next budget friendly item on here is $225. It is a Grizzly. Let me get the number right here. It is a Grizzly 65955. I believe that's correct. And what they did in this article was they rated the effectiveness of these things and some other factors too. Basically, how much air it pushed through, so the airflow. Um, I do not see a cubic feet per minute kind of thing, which would be nice if it listed it by cubic feet per minute. They list things like surface area and uh, rating of microns and other such things, which don't lead a whole lot to me. What I was really looking for, and I could not find that number, but it may be buried in the article, was like CFMs, but they give an airflow rating uh, from a D all the way up to an A. So A obviously has the best airflow, D having the worst. More important to me is the filtration effectiveness. I mean, if you're gonna have an air filter system, how good is it at filtering the air? I mean, is it removing the particulate? And is it doing so at the benefit of your wallet? Because to me, that's important. So when I looked at the next cheapest option, that Grizzly, $225. Now, let me tell you that as far as airflow goes, this rates a C plus on airflow. That's not the worst in here. Well, it might be. It's at the low end. No, there's actually two models that actually have worse airflow than this. Um, and I'll cover those in a second. But the, the Grizzly, which we were talking about, is a C plus. So airflow, about the same as this. Here's where the big difference lies. This rates a B in terms of filtration effectiveness. It's a B. It's like the second from the best, right? The Grizzly is a D. $225 for a D in effectiveness. Well, this is already a win, right? How do you go wrong? If I was gonna spend money on a professional or upgraded system, I could spend $225 over 40 and get a system that's even worse. Well, not even worse, just, just worse, right? Um, well, okay, so what if I spent a little bit more money? Come on, now they can't be all that bad. And you know, they're not. Um, I could go up and spend $244 and get myself a ShopFox. ShopFox is on here, $244. So, oh, well, their airflow is worse than this at a C minus. Remember, this was a C plus. And whereas this has a B for air filtration, the ShopFox is a C. How much was that again? $244. It's $200 more than this option, and it is a worse filtration option than a box fan. I, it, this kind of like opened my eyes to the fact that, you know what, you don't always have to spend a ton of money to get an effective tool. Um, I've said it like with my, my sander right here, it's a skill. Orbital sander, 60 bucks. It does the job. It does what I need it to do. Um, could I spend more? Absolutely. Do I need to? Not really. I still get effectiveness. Could I spend more? Absolutely. If I want the cream of the crop, the very best that I could hang from my ceiling, that would be, let's look at it right here. Yes, the Jet AFS 2000. AFS 2000 from Jet. Um, it has a great rating. I mean, it's uh, it, it moves a ton of air. Um, it has an A rating for filtration. It, uh, you know, it, it's, easy to use, it's easy to change the filters, it scored A's across the board. I think it's got a couple of A minuses, but you know, who's gonna quibble over a minus, right? $700. I don't have $700 to spend on an air filtration system. I could put that money somewhere else, get decent air filtration system, and be a happy camper. 
Let me break this down for you real quick. And I just, I will link this article, go and compare the things, look at the write-up and see what you think. But if, if you're a budget-minded person, but you do care about, you know, I need to clean dust out of my, my air. I've got a 4,000 cubic foot shop. It's 20 by 20 with like a 10 foot ceiling. I can turn over a lot of air with this thing and get a lot of particulate out of the air and breathe easier. So let me show you how this is constructed because I need to change the filter. Um, it's, uh, it's not looking great. I've kind of pre-loosened some of these screws here. This is just this one bracket that I need to loosen when I, well, not one bracket, one side I need to loosen. Oop, let me do this. There we go. Give you a better view so I'm not leaning in front all the time. Um, one bracket that I need to loosen down bottom. I'm just gonna use a regular screwdriver for this. And then there's one up top, which, let's go fast, shall we? So I just take these screws out, back them out, take this board off the top, which, these are about ready to fall out here. Let's see. There we go. There's those. And there's these. Now, I did upgrade mine. You know, it's budget, but I want it to be a little bit more effective. So you can see this is a 20 by 20 filter. And you can see, look at the, look at the pattern right there. You can see where the dust buildup is right here. This is, this is where it was sucking the air through, getting dirty. It still doesn't look horrible on the back, but, I mean, it needs to be changed. It's not as effective. Now, I bought a new one. Um, I will tell you though, there is something you should consider. If you go to a system like this, the, um, the system is only as effective as the filter that you put in there. To, to get the rating that they have on this system, you need at least a, um, a number 10 filter, or possibly even this is a 12. It's a little bit higher rated. There's different rating systems, like this is an FPR, there's also a MERV. I believe they're pretty much the same rating. Uh, but usually when you're looking at that, you're like, oh, well, how much pet dander and allergens and everything else does it clean out of the air? For me, it's how much dust does it take out? They say at least a 10, uh, which is gonna give you filtration with uh, air movement. A 12 does a better job of filtering, but it lowers the amount of air passing through because there's obviously more resistance. Anyway, before I stick this in there, I'm gonna show you my upgrade. On this fan, what I did was I put a piece of foam rubber um, insulation. It's basically this stuff right here. It's rubber foam and it's adhesive on one side. It's self-sticking weather seal. It's three quarter inches wide. So three quarters this way and then seven sixteenths. So a little over half an inch um, thick. And what that does is it just provides a nice seal between the fan and the filter. Uh, there is a bottom to the box as well. Uh, I did put a bottom on here just to kind of keep everything encapsulated. You can see the cord. I left just a little space right here. The cord comes out there. But that foam strip goes all the way around the face of the fan. And then you take the filter and look for the arrow, which shows the way the airflow is supposed to go. Obviously you want the airflow going into the fan. Um, because this is a 20 by 20, it doesn't matter which way I turn it. it really doesn't matter one little bit. It just needs to fit in here and be seated against that foam seal. Put the top and the bottom back on and my filter is then ready to roll. That's pretty much it. That's all there is to this thing. Uh, I stick it on the floor. Um, I don't know, I mean, probably more efficient to have them in the ceiling. That's where most of these go is in the ceiling, right? And you see them um, hanging in the ceiling and uh, you plug them in. I don't know, a lot of times you can use one of your outlets from like a garage door opener or if you have outlets in the top of your shop. I'm in a garage. I could hang it from the ceiling, but I already have those outlets utilized up there. So all I do is I stick this on the floor in my shop, plug it into an extension cord, and it's good to go. Um, not much more to consider with that. And you just let it run. Um, as long as you're creating dust in your shop, you should have this running and then let it run for a bit of time afterwards. Remember, just cause you're done sanding doesn't mean that dust has settled. So you whip that mask off, there's still dust floating around. So let this thing run and after a while, it'll clear all the air out of your shop. It'll leave less dust on your tools and your other such stuff. 
because the air is going to be circulating through the fan, collecting in here, passing the clean air out the other side. Plus, if you're like me and you have a shop that is not climate controlled, it's a nice little bonus in the winter or in the summer because it, it pushes some cooler air around. So anyway, this is my budget option. $40, save myself a couple of hundred bucks from buying a machine that has less performance. So uh, I hope this was helpful to you. If you end up building one for yourself or make modifications, whatever, let me know. I'd love to see it, love to hear about it. Uh, my name's Jeff, you're in JR's Wood Shop. Have a great day. Oh, don't forget, hit the subscribe button if you can. Awesome, take care.